Were you a conscript? No, I was a regular soldier. I was put in by the... I was a regular soldier because the, uh, the welfare put me in the army. I was under the arm, I was under the welfare until I was 21, and uh, I ended up running away from the, from them. They then I came back. They called up to me and gave me three choices: army, air force, or navy. So I took the army. And that was the start of my life. Yeah, after six months, I went to New Get. They opened up a new. Uh, they uh, opened up a new. Uh, unit which they called 106 field workshop. I was attached to that then from 102. And the 106 field workshop, their job was recovering vehicles and stuff was it? Yeah, uh, maintaining the vehicles, fixing them up, um, yeah, painting them. I heard that the um, 106 quite often took American stuff that the Americans had thrown out and fixed it up. Oh look, a lot of us did because I don't know what it was about the Yanks, but um, they had no, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, but yeah, trucks, jeeps used to find in the streets on the side of the road. They sort of didn't care too much for their machinery and vehicles and that. It was just like a play toy thing for them. That's crazy. And if something broke down, I'll go and get another one. You know, that's the kind of people they were. Wow. They showed that they were, they tried to show that they were more the elite, you know. They stand over you, they sort of look down at you. More or less, we're the, we're the American, we got, we got the first say, you know. You follow me. <laughs> so, uh, it was, yeah, when we was in the weed out, I found the monkey, we was on a, on a recovery, um, trip, pulled up to a bar uh, to get a beer on our trip and a little monkey was there tied up around a tree and he had uh, beer in his little bowl, he was only young, he was only a young monkey uh, it was so hot I just felt sad for the monkey so I went and asked whose monkey it was, the bloke said it's mine you can have it for a carton of beer so I gave him a carton of beer and he gave me the monkey. And the rest was history. <laughs> yeah. mm. And then you named the monkey? Yeah, I named the monkey. I named him Charlie Goloski. And I got Goloski from the Italians and all that when they first came to Australia, that Goloski name. You know those long, strange names of different people? <laughs> well, that was one of the names that's that uh, stayed with my mind for a long while was Goloski. I don't know whether it's Russian, German or what, but yeah, uh, it stayed with my mind. And then when I got the monkey, I, I said, oh, he can be Charlie Goloski, that's his name. Why Charlie? Well, Charlie is a, is a known enemy over in Vietnam. Charlie is the enemy, <laughs> you know? And so I just called him Charlie Goloski. Yeah. He ended up being the mascot of a unit, of our unit, and uh, just about everybody um, knew him, played with him, drank with him. <laughs> um, oh yeah, look, he, he entertained all the soldiers. It wasn't just one person. He entertained, he entertained everyone. He'd go right around everybody. You had some that didn't like him, throw him away, kick him. But you had others that sit him, have him on their shoulders and carry him around for a minute, pass him on to the next bloke. Yeah, he was a... Yeah, he made a, he made a bit of difference in the canteen to our... Oh, he made a big difference in the canteen to all the soldiers that lived in the... Oh, that went to the canteen, yeah. Yeah. He entertained, no worry. Was, that was his style, was the attention. Yeah, he sort of get a bigger chest as soon as people come around him. Yeah, but he didn't like many people. He used to he used to growl with his teeth, showing his teeth at certain people. Yeah. I think he told me that he would um he had had a bit of a thing for attacking women, didn't he? 
Yeah, well, he's like uh, most of the animals that live in the bush and in the mud. Uh, they they never they they don't like the human smell, and um, uh, they didn't. The monkeys didn't like the monkey didn't like the women because they they had this perfume scent, and they couldn't handle it. And I tried to tell the people who took the monkey, just watch him for the women because they don't like the smell of the scent. It's too, they go crazy. Anyway, they took the monkey one night and he ended up biting one of the nurses because of uh, they went crazy with the scent on them. But I tried to tell them before they did, yeah, there was something about the scent. Yeah, I left seven days for that. Seven days in prison? Yeah, seven days he'd be on top of that. Confined to barracks. And then another time I got five days jail for the monkey. Uh, he bit one of the officers. And everything, Charlie, done, no, I got seven days. In the military prison? Yeah, seven days in the when he bit the officer, I got seven days for that in the in the cells. Oh, five days actually, and the rest was all all confined to barracks, working like as soon as you knock off work, you start work again, go to till eight o'clock at night, then you knock off. That was your punishment of CB. Yeah. And you had to do all the chores, wash the dishes, all them sort of things after you knocked off work. Yeah. And then, I mean, according to the records of your regiment, they gave Charlie an actual official rank. Yeah, he was Lance Corporal Charlie Goloski, which is a one stripe on your shoulder, on your arm, you get one stripe, which is the Lance Corporal. I believe you were planning to bring Charlie back to Australia. Yeah, that was my intention. Um, I was having needles and that set up for his quarantine. Um, three months before he, we, we, he, he had to leave Vietnam, three months before, we started his, um, his uh, needles for quarantine, uh, but he didn't survive for that week after we'd done it. He ended up dying. How did he die? Uh, he OD. On drugs? On drugs. He took a, somebody must have left their pills in the vehicle the one we were cleaning out. Uh, and he took the lot, he, dug, he swallowed the lot, whatever they were. And we rushed him to Bung Tower to the hospital. In a helicopter? Yeah, we, yeah, we got chopper down. Okay, yeah, he flew down by chopper, they flew him down by chopper, down to the, um, to the hospital. Uh, they, kept him, they kept me and him there overnight. Uh, but, um, they wouldn't let, they let me stay that night and he, he, he got a little bit stronger after they pumped him out. But the next night I had to go and uh, all I put it down is he fretted for me and he died because I had to go home. They made me go back to the unit because I'd been in hospital with him for two days. Yeah. So I had to go back and when I left him, I believe he just fretted, that's all. And he died in hospital. Oh, look, it, it, yeah, it was very, very, um, yeah. And they gave him a, did you get to bury him? Yeah, I got to bury him. Um, um, just myself. Um, through orders, through the, through the, the boss. I was allowed to bury him to by myself. And anyway, so I picked a spot where we where we were camping and uh, dug a hole and yeah, made it a little grave with a few rocks and yeah, it was a very sad thing for me um, because he was my um, companion, he's my friend. Yeah. Um, You'd be no, way, no way to really describe how, how close he was to me, yeah. 
Oh, he was the one who got me through. A lot of people never made it, but he got me through. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think he would have got up to if you brought him back here? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Um, I thought about it a lot. How good he'd be here, and like the, we live out in the country. How good he'd be in the country. But um, but anyway, I didn't get to do it because he died before I went home. Anyway, when I yeah, when I came when I came home and settled down, um, I used to carry all my stuff in a satchel which I had in the, in the boot of my car. Um, anyway, uh, my car got knocked off and everything in the boot was chucked in the rubbish dump, in the rubbish bin, so I never ever seen them, never ever worn them, never ever saw them. You never wore your medals? No, never wore them, never saw them.